I am Bill Courtright with Living Right with Bill Courtright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome to the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Peggy Romero. Thank you for joining me for the Saturday podcast. Hi. Thank you. I'm so happy that you're here. This week, we've been talking about releasing and letting go. So there's a million reasons to let things go. I mean, can you imagine if you were still mad about everything that you were mad about yesterday or last week or 20 years ago? If you were still hurt over something that somebody said to you when you're 10 years old? If you were still brokenhearted because somebody cheated on you or, you know, did something mean to you or something? My gosh, what a heavy load to carry, right? Unfortunately, some of us don't let things go. Unfortunately, some people are brokenhearted over their past hurts. They've actually lost their spirit, buckled under the pressure, under the weight, pain, hurt, guilt, and resentment. Fortunately, we do let most things go. I mean, we have to, otherwise we'd all be moping around. How many things could we really carry? But I ask you, how many things do you still carry? Because I know I still have some stuff I'm working on. We carry these programs that no longer work for us. We don't have any reason to keep them. Um, You know, our programs that are just here, stories running around over and over in your head. And every time they come up, they bring you down every stinking time. We got to learn to let them go. If it doesn't let go easily, then dig deeper into it. There's lots of, of things that you can do to not push things down. You have to allow them. We don't need to carry these things anymore. So I decided to talk this week about letting go of bad habits. Well, better yet, letting go of bad habits and then intentionally creating better ones, ones that will work for us. Creating habits that will help us get closer to the life that we desire. Habits that will help us reach our goals and our true potential. We all have habits. I mean, you just can't help it. We've got good ones and bad ones. I realize many of the habits that I've had have been been unintentional. I didn't mean to create them, I just did. It, like I'm thinking about habits that people have and one thing I know that many people have that we really need to change is negative thoughts. I mean, we always go negative before positive, but we don't have to stay there. I mean, how many people do you know that get up every morning and start worrying first thing in the morning about their day or what may or may not happen? Thinking about what could go wrong. There's like such a simple way to overcome this Well, it's simple if you focus on it. You have to create a habit. Anytime you think of something that could go wrong, train yourself, catch yourself, be aware, and decide to think what could go right. Same circumstance, just imagine that it works out great. Just imagine that it works out in your benefit. It makes all the difference in the world. You will completely see the world differently, I promise you. I realized that I was starting to become a worrier when I was like in my 20s. I think I read in the Bible how, you know, worry doesn't change one thing. And so I really started thinking about that and realized exactly worry doesn't change anything. It's going to turn out how it turns out. You cannot change a single thing by worrying. So it's just completely a waste of time. Try that method. I'm telling you, you can think of five reasons why it will work out right instead of the couple that will work out wrong. Just plan on it working out right. It will change your life. Okay, so besides, you know, understanding that you get to decide what you think about every thought, just because it pops in your head doesn't mean that you need to spend any time dwelling on it. This is why the Green Focus Power Hour is so great. You set your mind every morning for positive. You get to set your day. You get to run your own life. And I will tell you, (laughs) when I'm more diligent about this, you know, I, I am diligent. I do it every day. But like when I was on vacation, I realized a lot of days I was rushing through it and I didn't spend as much time. I mean, I actually spend like probably two hours a day, sometimes more on my Green Focus Power Hour. I mean, right now I have the luxury of time and I really appreciate it. But when I'm rushing day after day doing a quick Green Focus Power Hour, I could feel it. My days start to become a little heavier. Part of my Green Focus Power Hour is uh, looking through my goals and sticking to them because um, it's just so important to me to work on purpose every day. So I decide what things I'm going to work on for the day. So I have a whiteboard in my office, and my uh, daily work items are written up there. So I'm studying to be a master coach for Stress Mastery, so I have to study for that. So that's an option. 
uh, creating content option. I have homework sometimes, so that's up there too. I got to make sure that I have that done on time. I'm hosting a retreat in New Mexico, so you know, planning that is an option. Marketing my book. I mean, I'm working on my relationships, so reaching out to a friend or a family member, I have that up there. So I have, there's lots more up there, but you guys get the idea. I have plenty of stuff to do, and I can't get it all done in one day, but I can just work on a few things every day. So I do a three of, three of those a day minimum, and sometimes I, I do more, but I know me. I know for a fact, if I don't remind myself, if I don't keep these goals, if I don't keep these daily tasks up there, then I won't change my habit and I'll keep trying to do the same thing over and over. So I have to keep them in front of me because if I stay the same by keeping the same routine, I'm not going to grow. We all have to shake things up a bit. So also during my green focus power hour, I decide which of those tasks I'm going to do. And it's been a habit for a really long time. I love to get things done. So journaling through my green focus power hour and, uh, you know, just listening to the podcast, working with Bill and stuff has really I, I really see how important it is. And it's really become a habit. I write in my journal sometimes way more than 10 minutes. And also the visualization, I visualize my day, I visualize my life, I visualize my me, my best version of me. Remember, guys, what you imagine you become. So imagine it. And then use affirmations. Such a good habit. I love my affirmations because speaking out loud, who you intend to be helps you become that person right now, today. Remember, you have to stay focused on who you want to be. Stay focused on who you really are. Having a habit of focus is amazing. Having a habit of being easily distracted, not so much. (laughs) So stay focused on who you are, who you're becoming. And remember, you're allowed to change your mind anytime you want to. You can be anybody that you want. What you decide on, just work for it. Make habits that, um, that work for that. So what matters to you today? What matters for you the most right now? You can be your future self right now. Just step into it because it's you. Embrace it. Here's a great habit that I have. I didn't, I've only had this for a year or two. Sunday mornings, I do my green focus management. And so I have my goals. They take up, you know, a space in my notebook. And then I have like chunks of those things that I have to work on or that I get to work on. Um, what am I going to do this week? How can I move myself forward? What things need to be done right away? What do I want to do later? I mean, it, it just depends on, you know, whatever I have going that week. Because sometimes I'm really busy. Like this week, my grandson's been here. So I didn't want to plan a bunch of stuff. So I do make a commitment to myself, though, what things will I do no matter how busy I get? My health is really important to me. So I have shopping and meal prep scheduled. I have my fitness classes. They're written in my schedule in pen. I'm going to them. We have our coaches meeting a couple times a week, written in pen. Personal development is a goal. So I'm working with Bill right now, written in pen. I don't miss that meeting unless I absolutely have to. But here's another thing. I want to be a better speaker. So I'd been going to uh, Toastmasters in Yuma, Arizona, and I really liked it. And then when I got to uh, Iowa, to Pella this summer, um, I found a group. It's uh, 40 minutes away. There's none here in town. So they only have it every other week instead of every week, but it's the closest one. So I figured, okay, you know, I'll just go. But then one time I got an email that they were canceling it. And then another time I drove all the way there and there was a note on the door that said, we're sorry, the meeting's canceled for today. So right now I decided that's not worth my time because there's a body pump class at the gym that I really wanted to take, but it was at the same time. So now that class overrides the Toastmasters. But when I get back to Yuma, I will get right back to it. I'm not worried about it because it's really important to me to become a better speaker. It's just not a goal that I'm working on right now. So it's okay to be flexible. It's important to create a habit of discipline. You guys, we only have one shot at life. So plan your week. Decide what you're going to do to move yourself forward. It's, it's up to you. Let go of the excuses that hold you back. And remember, your body supports the mind. So create habits that are going to help your mind, that are going to support you. So you want to be your best all day long. I love Bill's idea how he says he uh, sets a clock 
once an hour it goes off, you know, just to check in with himself. Instead, I use my whiteboard that I have because I look up at that often. So mine, I just have a note that says, just slow down. I like to say to myself, just take a few deep breaths. Be still. Check in with yourself. If you feel tension in your body, then you can realize that you need to deal with it. So for me, I'll get it in my shoulders and I get it in my neck. And so I'll just sit there and breathe in deep. And when I feel the kinks, I just remind myself, release, release, be still, slow down. I feel a lot of stress in my neck because I got in this high impact car accident a few years ago. So I just like to do my neck all the way back and my use my peripheral vision to the left and hold it for a minute and then do it to the right. My tension melts away. So I just want to remind you that we can be physically drained because our mind is exhausted. We have mental fatigue, stress, lack of sleep, and the body supports the mind. So remember, the good news is it works the other way too. So relax your mind, relax your body. They all work together beautifully. Green zone. So I know a lot of people have a habit of getting up and looking at their phones first thing in the morning. Other people have a habit of listening to the news in the background all day long. It's kind of like the same thing to me because you're just putting all of this stuff in your mind, negative things, scary things, politics, robbery, shootings. You can easily change the habit. Listen to the news one time through so that you know what's going on and then let it go. Move on with your day. There's nothing that you can do about it, but at least now you know. And you don't have to just get up and start filling your head with all of the reels on social media. Looking at other people's highlight reels, as David calls them, creates mimetic desire. I mean, I think that I would start off my day thinking, well, I'm not that good, or I'm sure not that pretty, or I'm not that smart, or, well, I wish I was this, or I wish I was that. I mean, gosh, you guys, stop. It's just crazy. Get up and read a good book, maybe self-improvement or just something positive, maybe a spiritual book or a Bible study. You know, I do the Course in Miracles. Um, I love it. I go through it every year. It's fantastic. They have it broken up into 365 uh, lessons, and it starts your day positive. And I also have a couple books that I'm always reading. So really important, guys. I think that putting positive stuff in your head is like almost as good as speaking out positive, positive affirmations. So it used to be so hard for me to do this because... I think maybe it was I was uncomfortable talking good about myself because I was so used to having this bunch of crap about me going through it. But I started doing it and, and now I can do it easily. It's awesome. You get to say who you are. I mean, after a while, you believe it. And you know why? Because it's true. So I love to read positive books out loud. There's something about it for me. I like to hear it audibly. And I like to read it at the same time. And then I also take notes. So it's it's really good. I, I love that. I love to do um, affirmations out loud. Also during my Green Focus Power Hour, I do that. And another thing that I do during my Green Focus Power is I keep track of my progress. You guys, a habit tracker creates momentum. I, I like mine to be all bold and colorful and I have stickers and all this other stuff. And I have all my data right in front of me. So I like to measure my progress. So even if I'm having a slow time and things seem to be a little sticky, you can still see the little check marks. You can still see the little ticks. I keep track of my sleep, my diet, my exercise. I check off those three things I do a day. I put a smiley face if I do more than three. I keep track of how much water I drink. I keep track of all of it. How, how I open my day, if I closed my night the night before. I mean, these are all really good habits because they help you gain momentum. And remember, one small step leads to another. And you get to choose what you focus on. So we have the five life categories in Stress Mastery. Career, finance, health, relationships, personal, spiritual development. But there's also, for me, it feels like underneath those, there's kind of some subcategories. So I have my writing, coaching, speaking, planning, marketing. You know, there's probably lots more. But I can't think of any off the top of my head. But you get to say what you focus on in relationships, your friendships or your families or both, you know, maybe it's work relationships. For me, I have the simple goal of reaching out to a couple people a week. That doesn't count my kids because I talk to them more. But you know what I'm saying? I moved away from Portland where all my friends are. So if I want to keep the relationships with the people that are important to me, I might have to reach out if they don't because I want to keep the connection. 
And I get to decide every day what's important today. So I just want to remind you that you get to do that too. And make sure that when you're making your goals and dreams that they're not based on who you used to be, because you're not that person anymore. You have to let that person go in order to step into the new identity. Be the person that you truly want to be right now. And um, you can choose who you want to be today. It's so awesome. You choose who you are right now. Don't make your decisions based on what other people think about you or say about you either. Aim for what you want today and tomorrow and make sure it's aligned to your purpose and not based in any of the egoic thoughts or based on yesterday. Sometimes you have to check in with yourself, don't you? I mean, I do. Who am I really? Who am I now? That's why the higher goal setting that Bill created works so well. Goals connected to your purpose. Goals connected to your true self, your heart. Goal, goals that are naturally attainable if you can stick to your why because it's connected to who you really are so go to the stress mastery community and find the um find that and make a plan because it will work for you too it works for everyone you just have to work the the program so stay connected to your why and don't let things distract you i mean this world is so full of distractions isn't it (laughs) One great habit that I created when I had my agency, which I still stick to now, is that I had time blocked out and my staff knew, like, I just finally had to tell them, pretend that I'm not here, pretend that you can't reach me, unless the place is on fire, which you know, it never was, but they always act like, oh, no, this is a really big problem. I just need you for one minute. But I trained them to just let me have my time. And if they really couldn't figure it out for themselves, you know, I could call the person back when I get back into the office, right? But 90% of the time they worked it out. One of the hardest habits for me to um, create was closing my day. It's not hard. (laughs) It was just hard to create the habit of doing it. You can close your day in a number of ways, and I highly suggest it. Forgiveness and letting go of unresolved conflicts is so important gratitude is a great way to put yourself into the green zone before you go to bed you can also just reflect on the day what did i learn today what what can i be proud of that i did today what did i do to take care of myself today i mean doing these things create momentum and they're a perfect way to help you move forward another good habit which i'm working on now sharing your goals with others so that you have some accountability Speak out your dreams into the world. Be bold. And if you don't have a group of friends that are moving forward and growing like you are, then find some. We just started a book study on the Happy Pocket Full of Money, which I invited you all to, and you can still join us if you want to. I can already tell that this group is going to be great for me. They're open-minded. They're focused on growth. And I was thinking when we're done, maybe we can even start a mastermind group because we've got a great base going. I can see us sharing our goals easily, sharing what we know and our experiences openly and lovingly and helping each other move forward. I mean, we all need that. Everybody needs that in their life. So you have to have a habit of discipline, though, in order to get all your stuff done. I've told you guys before that I set my stuff out in the morning a certain way and I take my thyroid medication on an empty stomach. So I grab that when I get my coffee so that I won't forget to take it. When I do that, I lay out my vitamins. I put them in a dish because I know I'm going to see it. All of this helps me to create habits, to stay on track. I like to write positive affirmations on the bathroom mirror. I mean, I say them in the morning, but it reminds me to take a deep breath and say something positive to myself when I see it during the day. I can't remember who the author was, but I think this is a really good idea. And since I just thought of it now, I think that I'll write them down and do it. When he goes in a doorway, um, he it triggers him to say a positive affirmation. I, I don't know his words exactly, but it's something like, here walks a man who's happy, loving, and ready to serve. Something like that. I would love to have that habit. So I think that I'll put some post-it notes maybe on my bedroom door, one on my office door. I could put one on, on my car door, on the window. I mean... It's just a way of creating a habit because I never remember to do it. So I'll let you guys know if it works out for me because I know it's a great idea. But we have to do things to create new habits, create new routines for ourselves. So while you're doing all these things, 
Remember, your ego is going to try to stop you. The ego doesn't want you to change. The ego will have a million reasons why you can't do it or shouldn't do it. You got to be ready for that. And remember, the ego is like a tricky little devil. So letting go and releasing old programs and creating new habits is going to take awareness. So don't put your guard down. So I want to remind you guys again why it's so important to name the ego because it was life changing for me. Step three, stress mastery creates awareness. It helps us to be able to differentiate ourself, us, me, from the inner critic. With just a breath, we can become present and separate ourselves. You just have to be aware enough to notice it. Naming the ego helps bring awareness in this constant stream of negative thoughts and self-chatter. This awareness can help us see the stories. We can actually watch them instead of getting all tangled up in them. We can see them. We can tell them that they're holding us back and keeping us inside our comfort zone. Remember, the ego will always resist change. Change is a threat to the ego's sense of identity and security. The ego wants you to stay the same. The ego's job is to keep you trapped in the comfort zone. By keeping us in the cage, the ego is trying to protect us from harm or failure. But of course, this will stop us from personal growth and prevents us from reaching our full potential. I mean, we can't grow and stay the same. It's impossible. So we have to be aware. Realizing that the ego is not you can create this separation for you. So you can actually observe thoughts and emotions. This allows us to see things more objectively. The rants of the ego are not real. They're not actually true. Well, not usually anyways. Detachment leads to awareness. Separate ourselves. Separate the eyes. Self-awareness can remind us to let go of the past and live in the present moment. By letting go of the past, we can override those programs and habits that we have and choose the ones that we want for today. Once you recognize the ego's fears and insecurities may not even represent who you are anymore, it's kind of easier to decide what to do next. Like I said, growth will not happen in the cage. Awareness is everything if you want to change your habits and let go of the past. With you, you, (laughs) seeing it, then you can begin to let go of the limiting beliefs and step outside the comfort zone into courage. We got to get to courage. But you have to change your habits in order to do that. Changing the routine and stepping out of the comfort zone is where growth occurs, like I said. So by overcoming the limits set by the ego, you can decide to create a new reality, a new identity for yourself. This comes with bigger goals and new possibilities. I mean, endless possibilities. Remember that the journey of self-authoring your life is ongoing. It requires lots of patience and self-compassion. So don't be hard on yourself. Remember, you're going to hear the ego's chatter all day long. Expect it. Just be aware of it and you're one step closer. Decide to be aware. Be present. Use the let go technique to release the programs. Stay connected to your true self and get really good at letting go of the stories that the ego tells you. Because you can do it, even though he's telling you you can't. Create new habits while you let go of the old ones. This will help you create the life of your dreams. And after all, isn't that why we're here? So that's it for today's podcast. But I do hope that this got you guys thinking, what's one thing that you can do today that will move you forward in the right direction? What's one habit that you'll commit to creating for yourself? It's my hope that you'll do just one thing. Well, it's my hope that you'll do more, but you get, you know what I'm saying. I think having a goal in front of me has been fantastic. I love my green focus management on Sunday mornings. Maybe you could do it on Monday if you don't want to commit to a Sunday. If you're not doing Green Focus Power Hour, please start. If you don't want to get up early, then that might mean that you got to go to bed just one hour earlier, and then you'll be able to get up in the morning and do it. Do whatever you need to do to take care of you, okay? Anyways, that's it for today's podcast. I thank you for joining me today. Remember, our mission here is to create a shift in the planet, and you can join us on the mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show notes. As always, until next time. Stay inspired.